using a very simple trading system and just sticking to that, then you won't really have any emotions. It should be boring. Like to me, it's boring. I think this stuff is boring. I, nothing else to do all day except sit here for one hour on the charts and I'm done trading and then it's like, what do I do now? So yeah, keep it boring, not aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> Philip? I mean, uh, my point of aggressive trading, uh, in my style, that would be just, uh, I, I wouldn't really call it uh, aggressive trading, but what I do is uh, I, I capitalize on winning trades a lot, uh, meaning that uh, I re-enter on winning positions wherever, which gives me a much higher uh, potential gain, but keeping the risk at the same level. So for example, if you ha if you enter a trade risking 2%, that goes into profit, you re uh, get a retracement you enter again put that first trade into break even right let's say you have a risk reward ratio of one to three so that would be a potential um gain of six percent right you re-enter put the previous one in break even and you still and then the 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 new trade you enter you're still risking overall you're still risking two percent but now suddenly you have a, a potential gain of uh could be 10 percent 11 percent uh so that would be my approach on aggressive trading that's what, what about I'm... yeah cool 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 what about um we'll get a couple more questions and so is hedging a safe strategy over to you nick so yeah, what, what you're doing. it depends on what they mean by hedging but typically like what uh, what i think people mean when they say hedging is like like, okay, I'm going to sell on GJ, and so I think it's going to go down, but it starts going up. Oh, my God, what am I supposed to do? And so then you go and buy another JPY cross pair, or you buy the same pair, GBP, JPY, to let it profit as it goes up. And after it goes up for a bit and starts coming down, then you close the buy so you've made some profit, and then you still got your sell open, and you let it come back. So, like, I, I don't completely understand this, and I could be completely wrong in saying this. But whenever I hear the word hedging, I think you're in on the same pair on a buy and a sell position. And if you're in the same pair on a buy and sell position, it probably means you're not quite sure which way it was gonna go, or you're not controlling your risk because you know, you're not cool with just saying like, hey, if I'm wrong, I'm gonna get stopped out here, I'm gonna take a loss, and I'm gonna move on to the next trading opportunity. So my thoughts on hedging, if that's what the person means by what I just described, again, I could be wrong. If that's what you mean, my thoughts on hedging is that you probably don't know what you're doing if you're hedging. You should just like decide which way you think it's gonna go, get in that trade, have a clear stop, a clear exit, and also have clear potential targets. Philip, your view on hedging, you said it depends before? Yeah, yeah it really depends. Uh, you could you could be doing two types of trading uh, when you're hedging on a pair. So let's say you're in a swing trade on, let's say, GJ, right? And then uh, you, find, you find some scalps in between on, on – um, on uh, sell positions and that that's that, that in my opinion that's okay if, you're, if, if that's what you're doing but aiming you know for 100 pip targets on both ways that, that that's just um uh not the way to go in my opinion yeah um right from justin this is quite a good question because i think it probably preempts like uh i don't know we, we're, we're at the very cutting edge of what you guys are doing. So um, what area, area of your trading are you currently working on trying to improve? Um, for me, it would definitely be um, stop trying to find a perfect entry because I have a lot of uh, um, members in my uh, Telegram group know that I've had, I have too many trades where our entries is missed by uh, you know, a couple of pips. I just really want to find that perfect entry on 61.8 or whatever, right? And I end, and I end up missing out on, you know, several hundred pips movement. So uh, that, that would be, that would be my stop being too, um, what's the word, too... Um, Perfectionist. Picky. Picky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nick, what about you? So, um, yeah, so that's a that's an amazing question, by the way. Whoever asked that, that is literally that's such a good question. Yeah. I myself am always trying to improve. I'm trying to improve my trading, my business, my personal life. Like I'm trying to optimize everything. And so one of my biggest problems with trading, not problems, I guess I should say, but one of the things I think I could improve on the most is my exits. So as far as like trading, doing analysis, it's super comfortable for me. It's super chill. 
I, I think I'm very good at how I enter trades. I don't consider my entries an issue. Conventional thinking doesn't disrupt the status quo, which is why T-Mobile for Business uses unconventional thinking to help your business realize new possibilities. Only one 5G partner offers unmatched network support and value without any trade-offs. My stop areas, my risk, um, but my exits. If I could get my exits better, then I could capitalize on so much more market movement. However, I'm very risk adverse. I don't want to put all my capital at risk. And so I'm a lot quicker, I should say, to want to just say, all right, let's just cut this trade at break even, or hey, let's just take profits here. I don't have time to watch it and monitor to see what it's going to do at the next set of levels. So I'm cool. Let me just take this profit off the off the table or whatever. And so that's a huge issue that I have is like, like, yeah, I'll let my winners run like half the time, but then I'll end up closing them early. And then we see what happened on New Zealand dollar JPY. And it's not that. Like half the trades that I close early end up going into huge profit. And so I think one of the best things I could work on is like my exits and just letting trades run further. So, hey, that's me. <laughs> I still do a good profit though. <laughs> Um, next question is, have you ever, uh, I'm just going to have to take a phone call here, sorry, but have you ever um, given up, almost given up on trading? I'm just going to mute myself. Philip, you go yeah. first, man. We'll drag this out. Um, it was like the first couple of months, I, I had this point where I was totally, I, I felt like like when I was looking on the charts, I was like, what, what am I looking at here? What am I doing? Like, this is not working. Um, and also my live account was going pretty shit. Uh, Obviously, I had my my parents obviously trading on demo, right? Um, but my parents were doubting that oh, this is this is not working. You should probably give up. So at that point, I took a step back, started uh, getting my education from different places, from watching your channel. Actually, that's where I, <laughs> that's where I started. That's where I, I had my comeback from. So actually. I built like my foundation of my new trading, um, starting from your channel and then just applying all these new things uh, coming from, um, from different uh, sources. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I considered giving up definitely one time. Good deal. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say ever hard considered giving up, like as far as like, like I sat down with myself and had the conversation in my head like, hey, is there the possibility that this won't work out? Like, should I just cut it here and focus on something else? I don't think I ever came like that far into doing it. But yes, there were definitely thoughts that would creep into my head based on external factors like the, my situation still not being profitable. I thought I'd be able to be profitable in like a month or two. And so the fact that it dragged out to six months, I was like, it still isn't working. And then a year and I was like, this still isn't working. And then I kept on going all the way till about like a year and four months, a year and a half before it actually started getting around break even to where I'd make a couple, like a couple grand a month, like two, three, four K a month. But yeah, I mean, there's been a couple of times where those thoughts had creeped into my head. Like, should I just stop and give up? But the thing that kept me going was that I knew, like I had personal friends that were trading and trading full time and making ridiculous amounts of money. I was working like 80 hours a week back in 2016, making about 2,600 per month between two jobs, about 85 hours a week in total. And it sucked. And I knew that for a fact they were making other money trading. And the thing that kept me going was saying like, well, they're doing it. Surely they're not smarter than me. Surely they're not any like better than me. And if they can do it, I can probably do it too. And so since I knew that it was possible, I was like, I'll just keep doing this. And even if it just takes me like two years, five years, 10 years, the day that I finally get it, it'll all be worth it. And then thank God for me, it only took a year and a half. I'm super happy about that. And I'm more than happy to have spent a year and a half learning because it taught me a lot about myself. It taught me a lot about continuing forward and keeping going and pursuing what I really wanted. And I think if you guys are in that position where you're kind of like questioning, like, should I give up or should I keep doing this stuff? Like my parents are saying go to college. My friends are saying it's stupid and I'm wasting time. Like, what should I do? Like, just take a good look around at the people actually making a ton of money trading and people living life with a lot of freedom. Take a good look around and ask yourself, is that something you really want to give up on? And if you do want to give up and it's not worth it, then by all means, go give up. But if it's something that you really want, stay with it. Because whenever you do get it, regardless of how long it takes you, I promise you it will be worth it. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Damn, I missed the first part of that. Um, it sounded good at the end, though. Um, sorry, sorry about the, the call. Now, I think we're going to do one last question, and we're going to wrap up here, guys. So, um, the last question is: How do you, how do you, how to control emotions after taking a trade if you're not sure but still took the trade? Uh, Philip, do you want to go for go for it on that one again? Emotions. Uh, can you repeat the question? 
how do you control emotion after taking a trade if you're not sure but still took the trade so you're not sure on the trade but you still took it how do you control your emotions well we did we covered the part about risk uh, risk management what you, you should be risking for trade or you should be f- feeling comfortable but uh, the part about taking a trade without knowing that that's not trading that's just gambling um, if, if that's what you're doing then you should just you should just take a step back um, educate your stuff educate yourself until you feel feel like okay I feel I, I know I, I at least have better understanding of how, how the markets work uh, and then and then you come back starting to uh, take trades uh, with the reasoning behind them so yeah so my response is that and this is going to take me about like 15 to 20 minutes to lay out here so i apologize for the time but essentially here's my answer what you should do you should close the trade you should close the trade and my explanation why is what philip just said it's just like you if you're to that point where you're like i took the trade but oh i'm not sure da, da, da. well if you're not sure then close the trade because you probably shouldn't have even taken it in the first place and it probably means you didn't put enough thought into the trade, which doesn't take a long time. It takes like 30 seconds to a minute for me to analyze most pairs. That's just because my system, my trading system is dirt simple. The setup is either there or it's not. If it's not clearly there, I just don't look to trade. I'd rather take five good trades per week than 50 trades where I don't all the way know and they're kind of weird and then I'm questioning after I entered them, like should I have even taken this trade, this and that. So yeah, my answer is just close the trade if you ever do that and then never again take a trade that you feel like 50 50 on like you should just be convinced like okay if i enter here it's going to go up and if it doesn't it'll hit my stop loss or i'll close and partial partial loss or whatever or something like that to like manage the position but yeah don't don't take the trade if you're not sure well, look, guys, that's Hey, folks, this episode is sponsored by The Fivers. The only funding down, and it did go down dramatically originally, it went from 500 to 75 pound, and he then took that 75 pound to 29,000. And you're going to see how he did it. Um, it's probably not recommended as a cane. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's not the thing haunted. And it was, and there's a reason why you did it. And look, you guys, if you listen to the podcast, you're going to find out. And uh, and maybe you can quickly tell us why in this video. But in the video, you're going to see the same method that he used to do that. We're going to go through a, a GBP AUD trade and a gold trade, and you're going to see how Kane does it. So, Kane, over to you, fella. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I basically took it upon myself to take that 500 pound count and flip it to 29,000. Um, but I'll kind of discuss that in the video as we go along. So I'll just give you the blueprint of how I did this um, with the strategy that I used. So basically, to start off with, this is kind of what my the chart should look like at the end of this video, um, just to give you kind of a heads up. Uh, I'll clear my chart, and we're going to start on the monthly time frame because we do top-down analysis, or I do anyway, for this strategy. And this allows us to gain clarity and to see, to see the overall picture um, of what the, tre- the trend's actually doing. So we obviously start with the trend line. So we just start from the bottom here, and it takes two two touches to make a trend line. So there's one, two, and you can see here that obviously there's one, two, three. There's that you know cluster touch there. So you know you can put it on the, the wick there, but you know if it aligns better, um, I think that aligns the best. So that's what I'll be going for on that. Okay. So there's your out out trend line. Um, it's pretty far. It's quite far away from, quite far away from this trend line at the moment. You know, it's, it's about 500 pips. Because at the moment, it's at 1.79, right? So, for the for the, for the meantime, I can tell that it's, it's nowhere near this trend line, right? It's, this this is a significant level, but it's nowhere near it. So I'm not. I don't have to really um, worry about that just yet. So we can go down to the weekly, even the daily at this point, and zoom in. I would definitely recommend using the eight hour time frame. A lot of people don't use the eight hour time frame. It's something I, I use significantly. It's, it's I use it every day um, just for analysis and it really, really helps. So if you're, if you're not using that, do try it out. Um, and we get the trend on again and we find one touch, two touch, and then we look for the third touch once more because our third touch or num- the number three in, uh, before X is like our magic number, right? 
it's the same with um, when I look for entries. I look for three rejections, then I look for a trade. It's the same for trend lines. I look for three, and then you take the trade. Um, so if you haven't tried that, do, do back test that and see how that um, plays out for you.